Oh, like every day here in Rack. Perfect for training to do some gym. Every morning at 7, that's the gym hour, at least one hour. We have good uh, teachers and they are here. Sometimes we are they are, I should say, pushing weights. I'm not doing that. I never did that. I don't want to try. I'm too old to do that. Some uh, football on the beach, some swimming, some stretching. Uh, bizarre world. I didn't knew before, but uh, I'm learning every day. <laughs> The Swiss guys are quite good, Alain Gauthier is very good, and, uh, and Ed Bird is quite good, he was trying to, do, uh, to, to be the goalkeeper in our team. You know the thing is, even at 7 o'clock or 7.30 in the morning here, it's quite hot. And your little heart is it's going quite high. That's really impressive. The, the first uh, day I did that, that was in Genoa. So, Right now, as you know, we are sharing the wheel. The boat is very, very stiff. So it, she's answering to any small puff, any small uh, wind variation each time. So it's like a small dinghy. The main difference is that it's huge. Everything is huge. The mast is huge. Everything is huge. So you have to be very careful. I don't like to to force and to fight against anything. That's why I'm not doing fighting against weight <laughs> in the gym, you know, I don't like that. And my goal is try to, to work with, this, with, with the guys to have the, the lighter rudder as possible. That's the way I'm used to do a multi -year. But the, the Alingi team, for sure, a, a big part of their tremendous skills is coming from the, the monorail area, where a rudder have to be stiff and have to work not only to steer the boat, but also to lift it. And that's interesting because we are playing between these two different, two different parts of the same area. I, I try to be as light as I can and to not, because each time you move your, your, your wheel, each time your rudders are slowing the machine. So you have to play for sure with the trimmers too, and hopefully with what we can uh, carry uh, on the on the main sheet and, and the traveler and with Simon or other guys like that. And that's a complete alchemy. You, you need to be uh, ready to work together. It, it could be dangerous for sure on this sort of materials. By the time, any little mistakes could be really bigger because of the size of the boat and also because on materials everything is, happens quicker. The, the boat speed is two, three, four times uh, higher than any classic boat, so that means the wind speed you feel on the time on the boat is a lot higher. In strong wind, yes, multi could be dangerous, especially if the water is not very flat. Big multi could be could be very dangerous. Red light on now! Crazy Americans. Crazy Americans. Shut up! So, Loic, it's the, uh... Oi! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks! <laughs> let's try again. Bloody riders. Here, conditions are perfect for this sort of boats. Really perfect to race, really perfect for any kind of big multi -ons. Flat water is important also for racing, short racing multi stories. For sure, you have also other multi able to do round the world trip, but that's not their goal, that's not their spirit. The spirit of these boats have to be as quick as possible against the wind and as quick as possible down. I discover, I knew that was existing, but I discover in this team how um, well prepared they are to test and to learn as quick as possible a new machine and a new way of sailing also. Each time we are going out sailing, racing, racing training, 
uh, we are doing a lot of tests like that. And then that's like Big Brother. He's watching everything. And uh, the handspan is really important for that, especially the healing angle. The goal when you helm a cat like that is to fly your helm, for sure, to have the minimum drag in the water. But if you fly, if you, if you fly too high, that's easy to fly high. But that's less efficient than to fly just above the water like that. So it's, that's why you have to be very, very concentrated. We have so much areas to talk about, you know. And so in, in big teams like, like that, you have a lot of specialists of, of different areas. And it's really time, it's, it's really important to share all the feelings, all the improvement which are making and which are working on, on, on in any sailing areas like, like the size, like the mechanical problem, like the winches, like the, the dagger bones, like the mast, like a lot of things. Because a good boat is not the addition of good things. That's, it needs to perfectly work together, like a good team. The briefing and debriefing and rebriefing are very important. At the beginning, you have the, the first sailing session were, were very interesting because we had maybe more engineers on board than sailors. And that was quite normal because that's a ninja and a baby first. And then slowly, during the last three months, the, 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 the engineers gave the keys to the sailors. We still have to share a lot of things with the engineers because each time we are going back from testing, we say that and that and that, maybe it could be better that way, that way, that way. On another hand, the sailors would like to race because that's their goal. That's maybe also the best way to learn the boat, to be in racing condition. So we are, some of us are pushing quite a lot to do some racing stuff, racing tests, racing tax, racing mistakes. Because the, when, the only way to learn is to do mistakes. And to do mistakes, we have to have some pressure some more pressure, speed pressure and whatever. So yes, it's time now. Hopefully it's time to do some racing mistakes and learn. Ah, that means, you know, when you hear that maybe 10 times a day, that means the briefing is in a few. And yes, tomorrow, another gym day at seven o'clock. Uh, I'll be there, sure. I don't know, I'm not going to lift, but uh, each time there is a lifting, each time I don't like it, I do bicycle all around in the area here. I go to, mar to the marina, going back and swim. Perfect for my little body. That's it.